Alright, in this video we're going to go ahead and look how to do a couple different types of transformations. We're going to be looking at translate, how to translate an object, right, which is to move it but not change its orientation. And then on how to reflect it across the y-axis, the x-axis, and over a graph of y equals x. So let's take a look at the first one. Notice on this first one it says translate three units left and two units up. So if I want to go ahead and translate it three units to the left and two units up, what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to label these real quick. And notice uh, most likely on your papers these are already going to be labeled. But I'm going to label it A, B, and C. When I move the point, the new point is going to be A prime, B prime, and C prime. And when I say prime, it's just going to have a little tick mark or what we call a little prime mark. It looks like an apostrophe after each one of the letters. And that shows that it's the new image that's been moved. In other words, this is the pre-image and the new one is the image, right? Our final product. Now, in order to move it three units up, I'm going to start there, or three units left, I should say, left and two units up. In any direction it gives you, um, you're just going to follow those directions. I recommend finding one good point. For instance, I'm going to start with A. Here's A. I'm going to put my pin on top of it. Now, uh, from here, I want to go three units to the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count left three times from A. One, two, three. And then I'm going to go two units up, translate it to units up. So from that point that I moved, I moved over three to the left, I'm now going to move two up. One, two. I'm going to put a point right there. And in this one, I'm going to do it in pink, and I'm going to call it A prime. I'm going to put a little bit of prime symbol. All right? looks like an apostrophe. So A has now moved three units to the left, one, two, three, and two units up, one, two. I'm going to do that now for the other two points, and then I'm done. So the translate, in my opinion, is the easiest one. If it says move left, go left. If it says move right, go right. If it says down, move down. If it says up, you're going to move up. So let's go ahead and do B. We're going to go three units left and two units up. So to the left, one, two, three, and two units up, one, two. Two. I'm going to put a point right there, and that's going to be B prime. And in C, I'm going to go three units left, one, two, three, and two units up, one, two. And I'll call that C prime. Now all we want to do is we want to just connect our dots real quick. So I'm going to connect the dots. Notice my shape did not change orientation. It did not change in size. It's still still the same scale. The only difference is I just shifted every single point three to the left and two units up. And that's all you do when it asks you to translate. So the shape should look the same. This is my new shape here. I'm just going to shade it in. And notice I did use the prime symbols in each one. Be sure to put the prime symbols in each one when you're doing work on transformations. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. On this other one, notice it says that we want to do a reflection across the y-axis. So first what we got to do is remember which one of these is the y-axis. And I'm going to go ahead and just highlight it. My y-axis is the vertical axis that runs up and down. So I'm going to put an x over here. This is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to reflect it over it. When we say reflection, I want you to imagine that this is a pancake. Imagine that this was a pancake and we got a pan, a spatula, and we slid it under, we picked it up, and then we flipped it over the other side. That's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to pick it up and flip it over. Now, the easy thing about a reflection is really, in my opinion, um, all you have to do is just count how far the dot is from the axis it wants you to flip over. And if for this particular example, we'll call this A, We'll call this B and call this point C. Now, if I go to my y-axis, which I'm going to reflect over, I'm going to go ahead and count how far it takes to get to C. So i got to go over 1, 2, 3. So notice I had to go over to the left 3 units. So if I'm reflecting over this y-axis, I want to make sure that for C, I go to the right, from, right 3 units. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3. I'm going to put a point, and I'm going to put C prime. Now for A, 
from the y-axis, I have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to go back to the y-axis, and if I reflect it over, it should also be 5 units out. But instead of 5 units to the left, we want to go 5 units to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put a point right there, and that's going to be A prime. So notice I'm labeling each one as I've done. Notice A was on the left and C was on the right. Now C is on the left and A is on the right. Then I'm going to go to my last point. So B is going to be 1, 2, 3 units to the left. So if I reflect it, in other words, it jumps over this y-axis, it should be 3 units to the right of it. 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to put B prime. And then all we got to do is connect the dots. And I'm going to shade it in. That's going to be my new newly translated figure. So we just got a couple more to do. So you, now you know how to do a translation. And you know how to do a reflection over the y-axis. So let's look at a reflection over the x-axis. So it's going to be very similar. The only difference is, instead of us flipping over the y-axis that runs vertical up and down, we're going to be reflecting over the x-axis. That's the one that runs left and right. Because this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to label this. Let's say this was ABC. If I reflect over the x-axis, what I'm going to do is go down to the x-axis and see how far my point is from it. For instance, C is just one unit from the x-axis on top. So if I want to take this and flip it down over the x-axis, i got to go the same distance from the x-axis, but down. So this is one up. So the new C is going to be one down from the x-axis. And I'll call that C prime. I'm going to go to A and find the x-axis where it lines up with, which is right here. And I will go down one unit. And I'm going to call that A prime. And then for B, notice I have to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So from the x-axis, I go down 4 units. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's going to be B prime. So now I'm just going to connect my dots. And I have reflected over the x-axis. So I'm just shading in my new shape. Now, when we're looking at a problem like this, uh, there's a couple things that we want to keep in mind. One is, is that when we're doing a reflection across y equals x, we're actually reflecting across a graph. And so that's going to make it a little bit different than what we've been doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would actually look like. Now, first of all, this graph, I'm just going to write it down real quick. I'm going to rewrite this. This is y is equal to x plus 0. Now I know they don't have a plus 0 on it, but anytime you have y equals x, that means that there is a 0 for the y-intercept. So we just don't write it in math. Anytime the y-intercept is 0, we just leave it blank and it looks like y equals x. But this is really in the form of what we call y equals m, our slope, x plus b, where b is the y-intercept and m is the slope. Now I'm telling you this because know that since there's not a number in front of x, there is an m there. It's just invisible. And we call it the invisible one. There's always an invisible one in front of every uh, variable. Now I'm going to turn that one into a fraction by just putting it over one. Anytime you have a whole number for your slope, like one, two, three, any number that's a whole number, you just want to go ahead, or an integer, it could be negative, you just want to go ahead and put underneath it a one as a denominator to turn it into a fraction. And then that makes it easy to graph. In other words, right here, my slope is equal to 1 over 1, which means if I were graphing this uh, from the y-intercept, I would go up one unit, and I would go to the right one unit. Now, this number right here, right, as I said before, this represents my y-intercept, which means that on this graph, I start at the point 0, 0. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put a point at my y-intercept real quick. It's going to be right here. Because I think in order for me to reflect this across the graph of y equals x, it's helpful to have a line. Now I do need one other point, and so I'm going to use the slope of 1 over 1, which means I go up 1 over 1. And if you want to put more than one point, you could put more than one if that helps you. You can go up 1 over 1 again, up 1 over 1 again. But I think after you have a few points, you know, that's, uh, it's more than enough for you to go ahead and graph it to get this reflection right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this up so I can draw a line through it real quick. And let me draw my line. I would recommend that anytime you have a problem like this, you probably go ahead and draw the line to use it as a reference for when you're going to reflect this over it. Now we'll call this, we'll say that um, this particular shape over here on the left, our pre-image is A, B, and C. And we're going to reflect it. Now before we were reflecting over the x-axis, right, and over the y-axis. But now we're reflecting over this line. And for any of you who are not good at graphing by hand the way I just did, if they're telling you to graph it over y equals x, or if it's even y equals 2x or y equals 2x plus 1, it really doesn't matter. You can actually just go ahead and go to your calculator, right? Hit the y equals to graph it. And in this case, it's just y equals x. So I just put an x. So that's y equals x. Hit graph. And you can see the line goes through origin. And it clearly looks just like what I graphed. If you weren't sure what points to use, you could have hit second and table to go ahead and get your points. And notice it says put a point at origin, 0, 0. Well, we knew that because of our y-intercept. And then it says we could have a point at 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and so on. And notice that's what I did, 1, 1, 2, 2, that's 3, 3. That's just their location. Now, before I actually reflect this over this line right here, over this graph, I'm going to use a piece of white copier paper. Right, and because that way you can see um, just a method you can use to reflect it without having to actually count over the amount that we have here. Now I can look at this and realize this goes up one and it's over two. So I'm thinking, well, you know, if I reflect it, I'm probably going to go down one and over two. But let's say, you know, you're looking at it, you said this will look very confusing. Let me go ahead and find another method to do this other than just counting over, or at least to double check your work. Well, you can get a piece of copier paper, just ask your teacher for it. And you can move that copy of paper over your image. And what I normally do is I highlight my axes. In other words, my y-axis and then my x-axis. And I'm going to put a point at origin because we're reflecting over this line, right? In other words, we're going to be reflecting over this line. I'm just going to kind of, right, we have a line going that way and a line going that way. And notice I'm just tracing things. Then I'm going to get my image. And I'm going to go ahead and trace it. Now, I know I have a point here. I know this is A. I have a point here. And this is B. And for some of you looking at the video, you may not be able to see the image. But using white copier paper, I can clearly see my image that's on the other side. So I'm just going to draw it out. The reason this is helpful is because I'm trying to reflect it on the other side, right? Now, I don't want to bend my paper up and fold my paper, but what I can do is now that I've got my image drawn, I could take this paper and I can fold it across the line. Because remember I told you, really, we're just flipping this like if it's a pancake. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to fold it. And just so you can see what it should look like, once I reflect it over this line, I probably need to fold it a little bit more. There it goes. So once I've reflected it, my shape, I'm just going to show you this real quick, should be looking like this. That should be C prime. This should be A prime. And this will be B prime. Right? And this forms a triangle just like we saw on the other side. So that's what it should look like. So when it is taken, right, and flipped over, it should look like this. Notice instead of B, B is still on the top, but now C is with it, right? And A has moved down here to the bottom. That's what it's going to look like when I reflect it. Now, you may not have been able to realize that just by looking at that line graph of how you're going to do it. It may look confusing. Now, the neat thing about this is if we do this particular method, I know what it's going to look like, right? I made that mirror image. So what I can do is I can take my paper, now that I've done this, and I can go ahead and press in really hard on these points. 
and what I can do is I can line it back up to my image and origin right and then I can press really hard and I can get these points to imprint themselves on my paper that I have so I'm gonna press really hard on my pen press really hard on my pen press really hard and watch this you're gonna see some points on there and now you can see my three points in other words here is B prime and notice I'm gonna mark them just like I see in the paper this one right here is C prime and this one right here is A prime I'm gonna connect my dots and now I have reflected the image over the graph of y equals x now that's just one way of many that you could do this the other thing is you could have just counted right for instance notice that on this side over here right I gotta go over 1 2 and up 1 and if you notice on this side I'm gonna go ahead and go down 2 and over 1 so here I went left 2 and up 1 and here I'm gonna go down 2 and over 1 and then for A I'm gonna go over 1 2 3 4 5 and up 1 and we're just gonna flip that in other words we're flipping our X and Y so I left 1 2 3 4 5 up 1 so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go instead of going left 5 1 2 3 4 5 I'm gonna go down 5 1 2 3 4 5 and over 1 and it's a rule and whenever we're doing this reflection you can think about it as a rule all I'm doing is counting how many units I went to the left and up and then instead of making it left and up I'm making it down and right so you're just doing the opposite in other words B I'm gonna go left 1 2 and I'm gonna go up 1 2 3 4 so now instead of going left and up I'm gonna go down and right so I'm gonna go down to 1 2 and right 4 1 2 3 4 so again you can do it by either using a piece of paper right to reflect it for you or you can do it by just doing the opposite of the direction you go once again C is 1 2 up 1 so I'm gonna go down 2 and over 1 hopefully this helps you and now you know how to reflect over the graph of y equals x how to reflect over the x-axis how to flex over the y-axis and how to translate a shape and good luck with your work